It looks really sad and lonely on a plate. It's just like having a Snickers bar. This looks a bit odd. I know it's a strange analogy. Hi everyone, welcome back and to today's video, my easy diet and exercise routine. What I eat in a day and what I've been doing to get back in shape. This is probably my most requested video so far this year, so I finally got around to filming it. Apologies if you were waiting a while for this one, but better late than never. So as I mentioned, I'm going to share everything I eat in a day. Actually, there will be probably what I've eaten throughout this week. On top of that, I've also got a little bonus where I'll be sharing my current skincare routine with a little bit of help from a few of my favorites from Beauty Pie. So all round, it's a bit of a well-being kind of video for you today, so hopefully you enjoy it. First, a little safety disclaimer. I am obviously a fashion blogger. I am not a nutritionist nor a qualified fitness instructor either. So it is always wise, especially if you've got any health conditions, to double check with your doctor first before starting any new diet or exercise routine. I'm simply here today to explain what I did to get back in shape. Okay, let's get started. So this new drive to get fit began last July, I think it was, when for medical reasons, I was forced to have a total hysterectomy. I woke up from that operation in excruciating pain and I'd literally been thrust into menopause overnight at the age of 42. Now we all hear about that inevitable weight gain when you go into the menopause or even perimenopausal women. And it felt like almost everything I read was just resigned to that fact. You're going to get big around the middle and there's not an awful lot you can do about it. So I set myself a little challenge. Was it possible to defy that rule? And could I stay the same weight that I'd been pretty much my whole entire life? And I honestly think it was that stubbornness of not wanting to be put in a box and not wanting something to be totally impossible that actually really spurred me on. To date, I am the lightest I've been for a very, very long time and the most toned I've been since I was about 13 in my ice skating days. So that's a little bit of the why. Let me now show you the how. So let me start this by saying, it hasn't been a walk in the park, but I am so determined and dedicated to getting as fit and healthy as I possibly can. But if you're sat there thinking, that's great Jess, but I actually love having my pancakes for breakfast, then that's totally cool, I get it. Life is way too short, as we all know too well. We just need to do what makes us feel happy in our own skin, and this is what makes me feel happy in mine. So like I have for many, many years, I eat a fairly low carb diet, but I'm definitely stricter with my diet now than I ever was before. Before I could cheat with the odd bit or quite a lot of chocolate actually, I'm a bit of a chocoholic. But after being thrown into the menopause early, I found that I really can't cheat as much as I used to do. So breakfast for me would be a watermelon, some cantaloupe, big bowl of strawberries, maybe all of them together. Berries are really good on a low carb diet. You can pretty much much eat any of them and they're really good for you at the same time as well and although you are getting some carbohydrate with that it's the good carbohydrate not the processed rubbish stuff that just sits on your stomach. The most filling breakfast I could have would be a big English breakfast, which I love. Obviously you can't have the toast on the side or the beans, you can eat the mushrooms, so bacon, eggs, mushrooms. Um, not sure about black pudding actually, if that's a low carb or not. I don't like it anyway, but you'll have to Google that one. It's obviously really filling and it just gets your metabolism going first thing in the morning, which is a good idea. But I'm a working mum and generally our mornings, certainly in the weekdays anyway, are complete madness trying to get everybody out for school. So I don't have time to be making a full English breakfast and I don't think I would want to eat that every day either. But I would say on a normal basis, it's probably for me either the fruit mix or I would just have a couple of boiled eggs with a little bit of salt on. I know, I know, it's the most boring breakfast ever, but I think I've got so used to it now that I actually wake up and I look forward to it. It looks really sad and lonely on a plate, but it's so filling and it's full of protein and it's a great start to the day. Okay, before I move on to what I eat for lunch, my dinner and my exercise routine, let's have a little bit of a skincare interlude as I really want to show you some of the products I'm using at the moment as it's changed quite a bit in the last six months or so. Plus, I've just received another new box of goodies from Beauty Pie, so I really want to show you everything I chose. First things first though, let me just give you a little review of some of the products that I've been using for quite a while now so I can give you my honest opinion of what they've been like. 
So first of all, I love this foundation. It's very light, very dewy. It seems to last all day long and it just gives you that really nice glow. Love this blusher. This one gives you that kind of flushed look, but not too over the top. Um, I shall write in the description box below all the different shades I'm using. And I use that one daily, actually. I've been using their concealer recently too. And then skincare wise, I have been using this for about the last six months or so to take my makeup off. It literally melts off my makeup. There's no nasty residue. And it just leaves my skin feeling really buffed and quite shiny. Love that one. Oh, it's still wet from the shower. So that's the products I already have. Let me now show you what I've just ordered. So first up, I went for some Like Sun Vitamin D3 capsules. These were recommended to me by a friend actually, so I'm really looking forward to giving those a try. I chose the Super Retinol High Dose Intensive Booster Treatment because we all love a little bit of retinol. I went for the Super Healthy Skin Amazing Sleep Oil. I like to add just a couple of drops of oil into my nighttime moisturizer and it just feels really lovely and decadent going to bed and obviously very moisturized too. So for the same reason, because of my very dry skin I wanted to try out their super healthy skin deluxe body cream I noticed particularly after our holidays that my legs my knees and my feet actually are really really dry and this one has had rave reviews so I'm very hopeful it's going to help next up my train of thought was that we might not be putting on the heating just yet but that doesn't mean we can't all get cozy comfy in our houses by candlelight so I ordered one of their beautiful candles this time going for one of their winter scents. It's apparently got orange, black currant, and a little bit of nutmeg. Oh, that's lovely. That would make a really lovely gift too, perhaps for Christmas presents. And finally, I was very excited to try out two of their new lipsticks from their Jenna Lyons collaboration. So let me see if I can try these on while I'm talking to you. I tend to wear orange reds the most, but then I quite like the more dramatic reds if I'm out, out. I'm never gonna be able to do this from here, am I? No, I'm too bleached out. I can't see what I'm doing. I'll add a cutaway here so you can see what the lipsticks are like. The true red is actually really nice. It's quite deep and sumptuous looking. I would probably wear the orangey red for daytime and the true red would probably be something that I'd reach for more in the evening for something quite striking. All of these goodies with traditional retail would have sent me back a whopping £364. However, because I have a Beauty Pie subscription, it comes in at £119.86 and that's in including shipping. And to be perfectly frank with you, the products are so lovely, I would definitely be recommending them to you, even if they didn't come with such huge savings. As always, I have added a link in the description box below for you to take a look at their range at the end of this video. Okay, so on to lunchtime, and invariably for me, I will probably have a salad. I really love salads, I'm quite obsessed with them actually. But something like a tuna salad, maybe goat's cheese I really like, and getting as many different greens in there as you possibly can. If I've made some turkey or chicken or something from the weekend, I'll try and make a bit extra and then I can save that cold meat and use it for salads throughout the week. That's something I really like. Obviously, cheese is featured quite heavily in a low carb diet. You've got to be careful not to overdo it on the cheese and not just eat it all the time. But it is particularly handy when you're putting it in salads or if you need something to snack on. In winter time, I tend to eat quite a lot of soups, carrot and coriander, broccoli and stilton, chicken soups. They're all really lovely ones that are quite low in carbs. If you haven't had eggs at breakfast, an omelette is a really good idea that's really really filling Add some green beans maybe some mushrooms just try and generally make things as healthy as you possibly can because although I want to remain this weight I equally you know I'm 43 now I don't want to make myself poorly either so it's a fine line to getting it right eat healthily as much veg as you possibly can and a little bit of exercise can go a long way which I'll tell you about in a moment Throughout lockdown, we got into a wonderful habit of David predominantly cooking our evening meal. He really likes cooking, I really hate it, and as an extra bonus, he eats pretty similar to me at the moment too. His weight had just shimmied him over into the diabetic zone, so obviously that was dangerous and he wanted to reverse it. So he started eating very similar, eating quite a low carb diet, 
and he's managed to reverse it already. Not quite got into the healthy zone yet, but well on his way. So it absolutely works. So we will have meat or chicken once or twice a week. Salmon, we particularly like with stir fry and I particularly like that one for when I just want something quick and easy. We eat sea bass a lot. Gosh, it feels like we eat sea bass all the time. We don't, we only have it once a week, but I am always totally stuffed afterwards. It's a great meal. I think my diet is very, very easy to do, but I do register that it's not so easy if you're vegetarian. You would probably find this really hard. There are ways to do it, and there's lots of information on Google about you know making it work for vegetarian and vegans, etc. But obviously my version is predominantly for people who do eat meat and fish. So whatever meat or fish you do decide to go for for your evening meal, obviously don't have the potatoes or the chips or any of those heavy carbs with it, but do have as many different green vegetables as you can possibly pile onto your plate. We eat a lot of cabbage, we have broccoli, asparagus, green beans, no peas because they're quite high in sugar and just occasionally on munch too for the same reason. Now while eating this way, I am really careful with what I drink as well because a bit like sauces, there can be hidden carbs in things that you never in a million years thought was quite high in carbs and actually you could be ruining your diet just from having a glass of fruit juice each morning. So on that note, I don't drink fresh orange juice or apple juice or pineapple juice. Generally, most juices are actually quite high in sugar. So obviously water is the best thing to drink. If that gets a little bit boring, you could add a little bit of cordial in it. You can easily get hold of sugar-free versions. All round really, this easy diet is not really a diet at all. I mean, I've been eating like this for about 20 years. And although since last July when I had the operation, I've had to be stricter with myself now, that isn't such a bad thing either because I was eating so much chocolate, um, it really wasn't good for me. I never go hungry, I always feel full, and I eat a really good collection of different vegetables and meats and fish and lots of salads. I feel healthy, I've got lots of energy, and the exercise portion, which I'm going to move on to now, is really just the icing on the cake. My new exercise routine has been a game changer for me and combined with eating more carefully, it's made a massive difference to my shape overall. Obviously, I'm not finished yet. I'm still very much on my journey, but I can really see the progress and I can see the light at the end of the tunnel, which has been a bit of a revelation for me. I don't think I've ever got to this stage. Now, while I've always been a fairly healthy weight, aside from pregnancy, actually, where I put four stone on with each child, I just totally overate and gorged myself on food. Terrible, really. But other than that, I would say I've always been about this size, which is a UK 10. However, I would say I was never particularly toned. And I tried so many different exercise routines over the years, and I failed every single one of them. I'd actually got to the stage where I thought my body is immune to exercise and just will not tone. It's not possible. So it's ironic, really, that after being forced into the menopause early, I am now the most toned I have been for a very, very long time. So I think it's probably Probably easiest to explain this if I get my gym kit on and I'll show you my little setup and the exercises I've been doing. So this is my little gym setup and it's very very basic uh, which hopefully makes it easy for anyone else to recreate. All I've got is an exercise mat so you don't hurt yourself. I've got YouTube or similar to follow an instructor and then I've got my weights. I've got a pair of three kilogram weights which is what I started with and then I've now also got the four kilogram. These are very very light I might add and if you're on two don't worry it doesn't matter. I watched these instructors doing the video and I think they're lifting like eight kilogram to ten kilogram weights throughout and doing all these punching moves and I think how on earth are you doing that I wouldn't be able to lift it. But I really think when it comes to weights you should absolutely go at your own pace and just slowly build yourself up. I'm sure I'll get to eight kilograms eventually, but for now I think four is definitely my limit. So in terms of exercise routine, I follow a couple of different people on YouTube. I also follow a really nice lady who equally likes weights over on Instagram. So a couple of different places and I sort of glean information from each one. Now that I've been doing it for quite a while, I sometimes just make my own little routine of my favorite exercises. And other times I just need a refresher and I'll go back to a video. But I shall link all my favorite videos that I watch and 
and exercise along to in the description box below so you've got a really good starting point. So I tend to do my exercise first thing in the morning. I generally wake up quite early before everybody else is awake and I'll come into my office, put my mat out, get my weights ready and find a routine that I want to do. And after half an hour's exercise, I'm finished by about seven o'clock and then everyone starts coming downstairs. So it works out really well for me and my lifestyle. So when I first started doing this exercise routine, I really had to think to myself, what was the problem before? Why did I not keep up my exercise routine before and how can I fix it this time? And one of the main problems for me was time. You know, I'm a mum of three children, I work full time, I've got a house, David's away a lot, da 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 da, usual life stuff. So I found that I couldn't really fit in going to the gym because by the time you've gone there, you've done your thing, you've come home, it's a couple of hours out. So lockdown actually was quite helpful because it made you sort of start exercising at home and realize how easy that could be. The second thing was, if I'm going to keep this up, I have to adjust the amount of time I dedicate to it per day. So I only do half an hour of exercise five days a week. And I think it's that that's made me be far more consistent this time around than ever before. If you're really ambitious with yourself and you think, okay, I'm going to do an hour, but the reality is you've only actually got half an hour spare and then the kids are shouting and someone needs a lunchbox and you just can't fit it in, you will end up giving up that exercise routine pretty quickly, which is what I did previously. But if you think to yourself, okay, what's the time slot I got spare? What could I dedicate to this? And for me, it was half an hour in the morning, first thing before everybody else has woken up. The second thing I asked myself last year was which part of my body do I hate the most? And obviously after just having a total hysterectomy, it was my stomach. And it was that that I was quite paranoid of. I didn't want to get a mum tum going into the menopause, yada yada. So I decided to make sure that 15 minutes out of my half an hour workout per day was always on my stomach. And then the other 15 minutes I do legs on one day and the next day I'll do arms. Then I'll go back to legs, then I'll go back to arms. I will write in the description box a bit of a diary of day one, abs and legs, day two, abs and arms, and perhaps give a couple of different links to go with each for the different videos I'm alternating. Try not to do the same exercise video every single day, because then you might be missing out on toning some of the other muscle groups. So get a little collection together of your favorite fitness videos and alternate between them throughout the space of your five days, your six days, whatever it is that you can dedicate to exercising. And I promise, I promise it will make a difference. The best analogy I can give is when you're, you're making scrambled eggs and you're stirring and you're stirring and it's taking forever to scramble. And then all of a sudden you've got your scrambled eggs and it's off and running before you can catch up. I know it's a strange analogy, but that's kind of how it felt when it comes to toning my body. I was there every day doing my exercises, doing my legs, doing my squats, and thinking this isn't working, it's happening again. And then all of a sudden I started to see a bit of a muscle, a bit of an ab, and then it was off and running from that point. So I promise you it will happen. Nobody I don't think is immune to getting toned from exercise. It's just a matter of being consistent and dedicated and having that drive and determination and excitement really to see where you can get to, to see how you can change your body shape. And for me, it was definitely for the better. So this is definitely the first and the last time I think I will ever show my exercise routine. Honestly, I didn't realize how hard it would be to film, to try and fit my whole body into shot and then try and talk and exercise at the same time. Hats off to the professionals. Anyway, I eventually decided it might be a bit easier to add a voiceover instead. So these are some of my favorite exercises. I'm trying to get that toned shoulder, lean arm kind of look going on. I haven't got them yet, but it's definitely a work in progress. On legs, I like to do lots of squats, deadlifts and lunges. Even though I think my arms are actually the weakest body part, I always seem to find the leg workouts the hardest. This one doesn't look much at all, but I can really feel the burn in my legs. Sometimes I'll mix in the odd ballet lesson that I'll find on YouTube, and I think combined with a weights routine, that is really helping me to start turning up my legs. Onto abs, and although I'm not a huge fan of traditional sit-ups at all, I've managed to find a couple of good tutorials who do variations of them instead. These leg raises look ridiculous, I know, but they're a good challenge for your stomach muscles. And one thing's for sure, though I might be moaning in my head at the time, I never regret a workout once it's finished. This is my favorite ab exercise. I seem to focus on trying to be as elegant as possible and almost forget about the burn.
I really hope you've enjoyed watching my easy diet and exercise routine, and most importantly, that you found it helpful. Please feel free to ask me any questions in the comments section below. I'm only too happy to help if I can. A big thank you again to Beauty Pie for supporting my channel. I cannot recommend their products and their subscription enough. So make sure you click the link in the description box below at the end of this video and take a look at their lovely products for yourself. Have a wonderful week, everyone. I will see you on Sunday. Take care. This looks a bit odd because my head's disappearing in this footage, so I think I should film my exercise routine when I'm not talking at the same time.